everybody's different but my question to you is we know where we are we know the situation we know what we're faced with are you gonna be there and let it stop you or are you gonna pull through until you reach your own goal strictly is it's become such an amazing platform for representation and the fact it's in everyone's yes. homes every saturday night and so many different people of so many different ages so many different backgrounds watch it and each season it shares so many important messages from you know same-sex pairings to deaf dancers and that is truly game-changing on tv when you look at the mm. show now what barriers would you like to see it break down next or what have you been proudest of seeing on the show as well you know what i think the barrier that i think we most definitely all have to come come over like grow over that is that stop the labels mm. i think if we kind of say this is a normal life like every time you put somebody on a different platform every time the same a couple you know same sex couple becomes gets a different platform it still doesn't make them equal then to what people see as normal so if everything that we do becomes just a normality without saying oh my gosh <clears throat> We've got one black person, we've got a, a, a same sex, we've got this. The labels, this is what we all really need to get over that. This is life. The life is not, we're not breaking areas on barriers. If we're suddenly including people, it shows how not inclusive we were before. And obviously, yes, we are all growing and things are changing and so on. But for me, it's like the labels. Let's just be humans. Can we be humans? we need to come to a state in our society that we don't separate human beings anymore. Like it's 2023. Why are we still talking about, Oh, first time this, that makes me so upset. That makes me so upset when I'm like, are you proud? Are you really proud? It's 2023, 2000 years, 2000 years after Christ was born, you decided, Oh, now I'm awake. Come on, people have been suffering for years and years. So, yeah, let's, let, that's my biggest wish, that we as a human race just grow. And I know it's difficult. People don't want to grow. The people are comfortable. Why should things change? Let's, um, yeah, why should things change? We used to do it. I meet people somewhere like uh, and they say have you visited south africa yet or and i was like yeah and then they say yeah i visited 20 years ago it was so much better or and i'm just like but for who was it better mm. <laughs> for who you know what i mean it's it's just like yeah i think you beautifully said it and i think that we just need to stop labeling people and the fact that we are still celebrating we had sabrina alba on the podcast recently and she was saying She's so yeah. over being celebrated the first African woman to, you know, be um, a UN yeah. Goodwill ambassador. Yeah. She's like, it's what does that say about our society yeah. if we're still celebrating firsts in 2023? What I also really, 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 really dislike is when people are like, um, you know, yeah, she got it because she's black or whatever. It takes away from every black woman, like in my example, it takes away my experience. It takes away my quality. It takes away everything that I have been through and marched on through to be there. When you just see the label, oh, she's black. First, you know, first strictly black judge, first this, this, this. It takes away 15 years of experience as a judge. It takes away 30 years of my experience as a dancer. And maybe my experience as a dancer is not your experience, but maybe my growth coming from South Africa and going through all levels is a different kind of experience, which gives me a different side of the ball. All these labels, like obviously we want to we we want to celebrate somebody when they've achieved something that has uh seemed unattainable for for a while especially for different people and different you know um generations but at the end of the day uh, it's it's that's the main question how did they get there and don't forget that they are qualified and bring talent to be at that space it's not just like you're there, you know, mm. otherwise you wouldn't be there. Otherwise you really wouldn't be someone. Otherwise you wouldn't have had other accolades maybe that people are not aware of. 
And you have so many accolades from your time as a professional dancer <laughs> and your 15 years of experience being a TV judge. So I think it's quite a nice moment to take it back to the beginning for you because you grew up in apartheid era South Africa. And what was that experience like for you? Well, it's, you know, the experience, it's never nice. It's it's just not nice. You are, you are in a country where there's a systemic racism. It's part of the law. And uh, this is also a subject when people come to me and say, but when you were like in the 80s, when you were a kid, it wasn't so bad. But it was bad. It was bad. Our parents were going on strikes. Uh, we could miss school because they've burned the streets. Mm, police could just charge into your house and, and come with these big dogs and harass you. Uh, at school, you had people who speak about religion but are being awful to black children. And you're like, where does God fit in? Like, in your head, there's a lot going on. Um, you always didn't feel deserving. You didn't feel like, even if you were at spaces, you didn't, you never got to that place of, oh, but I did deserve it. And um, <clears throat> you always saw the boundaries. Like, you, there was always boundaries of what and what you cannot do. Um, so it wasn't a fun place to be for a child. Uh, our parents did their utmost, really their best to kind of, um, keep us in a safe bubble, a really safe bubble. As much as they tried, the reality was different. So, um, I would say we would be one of the lucky ones in the fact that our parents did everything they could to push us forward. But that being said, if you're speaking about being pushed forward and being like, you know, excellent in school, excellent in book, that comes with also its territories where it's never just like, it's good to be, sometimes it's just you, you just don't like, it's good to just be you. You don't have to prove mm. anything to just be you. So, and, and being confrate, like being in school and every day having to have those microaggressions because we were lucky and privileged enough to go to a private school or to go to a school because the education was better in a white school area. But every day you would be facing racism in a white school area, whether you're facing racism for a teacher, whether you're fa uh, facing racism from pupils, from, from like from the bus, I, I remember we every day to school in the bus, we were like terrorized. There was these big boys who spoke Afrikaans, this is like a Dutch, that would just scream and shout and you're a little girl and, and being aggressive. And when we were hot, we opened the window, they'd slam the window like every day, every day. So yeah, that's, that's how we grew up. Do you still experience discrimination and how do you deal with it now when you come into contact with it or if you come into contact with it i still experience this it's infuriating but i always as growing up in south africa you get hardcore about these things you get really hardcore yeah which is also not really fair because some people are extremely hurt and sensitive and stuff and you've got this hard shell so so like when people are racist actually you go in the world expecting it sometimes in situations you already know what you're going to be facing which you learn to prepare yourself is it fair it's not fair should i not go there i don't think so because otherwise we won't change things but um i assess the situation i assess the situation like um, I remember, I know when, uh, every time I travel, like also in Europe, yeah, I travel up and down and I was coming, uh, from London and there's, um, passport and there's a space where it was like the world, everybody goes there and there's a space that says European German and there's this tall, tall guy behind me and he's just poking his head like behind me and like after five minutes, I'm like, dude, what's happening can you calm down what's wrong it's a line we all and it's like but that's a european line and i'm like hello the face of europe has changed europe looks different these days so he looked at my skin and was like she's not 
this is not Europe. <laughs> this here is not Europe. <laughs> and you, you face stuff like this. Like when I travel with my husband and we go on a plane and then he'll let through and then I come and they stop me and they say passport. I'm like, because they don't figure out we are together. And I'm like, why did you ask for his passport and why are you asking for my passport? Where's the difference? That's somebody judging you for your skin color. But I've learned to say to myself, will this change my mood right now? Is it what it needs? And then I react accordingly. When there's spaces where it's going to be like, I'm going to let this place explode, then I will explode. When there's spaces where I'm like, I, I feel actually sorry for you. I'm just going to move on. And my vibe is too good for you and your uneducated self. <laughs> your racist person then i just pass on because you can't educate the world you can't have those soldiers you can't have that pressure you can't have that 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 life where you, it's all about defending yourself and you know i know where i'm living i know i know which continent i'm living so as much as i know all of that my question is is you know, are you going to let it stop you? Are you going to grab opportunities? Are you going to push through? I came to this continent with a suitcase and maybe 50 euros in my, in my wallet. That's it. So I could have sat there and said, poor Mutsi, you know, but, and everybody's different. But my question to you is we know where we are. We know the situation. We know what we're faced with. Are you going to be there and let it stop you? Or are you going to pull through until you reach your own goal? Whatever it is that you want to be, there's ways, there must be ways. And it's hard, but are you going to let it really stop you from achieving what you want to achieve? And that's what I say all the time. And when it's decisions or when I see, I see, you know, uh, I see spaces where I'm like, oh, but that person, look how doors are opening for them. And you're just like still pushing doors. I always go back to myself. Are you going to let that affect you to your real goal? Are you going to let that change your view and sulk? And there's days where I sulk and I say it's unfair. And I'm with my sister on the phone and we're like, we're like, it comes all out. But then we get up and we're like, are we going to let us stop us? And th that makes a difference. And no one can kill your vibe, babes. Your vibe is 10 out I mean, of 10. It's, <laughs> it's vibrating. 